Hello everyone, this is Kristen Poisson, the Reading Specialist at Memorial School in Upton. I am here today to give parents who were unable to attend our in-person Lexia Parent Sessions some information about using the program at home. We um, were able to get all students from pre-K to fourth grade on Lexia this year. Uh, with their accounts and everyone is is set to go and use the program. I know a lot of uh, grade levels have had really great use both at school and at home. So you've probably seen uh, the program before but I'm here to kind of give you a little tutorial on some of the features that you might not know about. Um, we currently have about 60 to 70 percent of our students meeting their usage consistently which is really a great improvement for us from last year. Um, to give you an idea of the success that we've had, students who are meeting their usage, meeting those minutes that they're supposed to be meeting each week, we have 86% of those students working at or above grade level in the program. Um, if you compare that to where they started the year, 57% of those students, of those students um, were working at or above grade level. So we've, we've made quite an improvement. Um, with those students who are meeting their minutes um, and, and we've seen really good success with the program. If you uh, would like more information about the successes we've seen with it, you can visit my website at mrspoisson.com. The PowerPoint from this presentation that we did in person today at Memorial is there posted uh, for you. So you can read a little bit. There are a few slides that um, really touch on uh, the successes that we've seen with the program. So I'm going to go right into um, what you see at home. So if you're using this program at home on a computer, you're going to lexiacore5.com um, for the login screen. If you're using it on a tablet or a phone, you need to have the app that you can download from the App Store, the Lexia Core 5 app. Um, it, the website does not work on a tablet. So the students go to this screen and they enter their username and password. Um, most students have uh, the username being um, their first initial and their last name. There are a few students, maybe a handful of students who do have um, something a little bit different, maybe a first initial, middle initial, um, if they have a sibling that has the same first initial. So um, it, the information should have been sent home um, but if it hasn't been, you can always ask your child's teacher for it. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in um, to a test account that we have. The password for your student will be capital M-U-R-S-D and then their four-digit student ID number. All right, so this is the screen that your student would see when they first log into the um, Lexia program. So your student's name would be up here at the top. This gives you an idea, um, tells you the level they're in, and then down here will tell you the number. So it's level five, the Scottish Cliffs. Each level is uh, taking place at a different place around the, around the world. Um, so it kind of gives them a little view down here of where they've been, where the stars are, where they're at, and where they have next to go. I believe level six uh, is Paris. So this student would be moving from the Scottish Cliffs to Paris next. This middle circle here with the 60 in it is telling us how many minutes the student has logged this week. So this student account's goal is 50 minutes a week. We've been using this account in our in-person um, training sessions for parents this week, so we've, we've put a lot of minutes on it. Um, so this currently this student has 60 minutes. It tells that student that they've met their goal. If they hadn't met their goal, it would be telling you maybe 20, and then down here it would tell you you need 30 minutes um, to meet your goal. So when this is not... Um, when the goal is not completed, part of this yellow circle is gray, and it kind of gives them an idea 
of how much time left they have for the week. Everyone's goal is different based on where they are in the program in relation to their grade level. So if we have a student working, um, a second grade student working at a second grade level, they have a, a, a smaller goal than a second grade student working at a first grade level in the program um, because the program is attempting to give the student um, an amount of time that would then allow them to catch up to grade level. Um, and then over here, this tells you how many units um, the student has completed in the week. And I will talk a little bit more about units um, when we get into the program. So the first thing your student will do um, after you take a look at all that information is click on the big arrow in the middle of the screen. Alright, so this is the screen that will come up typically when your student logs in. Um, the first thing that they'll do once they leave that main screen that we were at is they'll have a warm-up activity. There's no warm-up activity here offered because you get one warm-up a day. And we used, um, as I mentioned, we used the program earlier today with the in-person parent training. So there's no warm-up here. Um, but if your student was to log in, they'd have a choice of two warm-up activities. They typically take about one minute to complete, um, and they the program will tell them their high score that they can then try to beat. So this is the level five screen um, where the student sees the five activities that they have to choose from. When a student completes an activity, it gets completely colored in like this middle one picture word match. The student has to complete all of the segments around the circle for it to be colored in and completed. Each level has two halves. As you see down here, it says level five, first half. This blue circle tells you you're in the first half. Once these five games are all colored in, like this one, the second half of the level will be unlocked for the student. The student has to complete both halves of the level to move to the next level. So these five have to be all colored in, which will unlock these five. And once they're all colored in, the student will be then moving on to level six. So I'm going to show you um, a few of the features that we have when we go into an activity. We'll go with medial vowels. So right now in medial vowels, this student has two units completed. Typically, a unit is a student completing about 10 examples in, in one of these activities. So I'll show you what I'm talking about Listen here. to this word. It has a short vowel sound. Pit. I makes the short sound I. Choose the letter that makes the short vowel sound you hear. Fix. Okay, so the student is asked to choose the middle sound they're hearing. Max. All right, so in this activity, you can see that after each one, a carrot is going to pop up. There are 12 carrots for this activity. So for this particular uh, medial vowel activity, they have to complete 12 of these words um, in order to complete a unit. So when these 12 carats pop up and this green bar moves all the way across the screen, fills all in with green, this next segment of the circle will be filled in. So there's a few things that parents might not know about that I'm going to show you. The first is that if your student misses the direction, you can go down here to the question mark and then have it repeated. Choose the letter that makes the short vowel sound you hear. Max. Fun. If your student knows the direction but just missed the word, this button will just repeat the word. Fun. Mix. Now you don't, you want to be careful that when your student is in an activity, they're completing their green bar before they're Xing out. 
if this student was to X out right now, this progress that they've made would be gone when they come back into it. They have to complete the green bar at the bottom for anything to be saved. Um, if they get halfway and they X out, they're starting back at the beginning the next time they come into the program. Um, so I'm going to get some wrong now to show you what the program does when a student's struggling. Try again. Mix. It will typically give them um, one more chance. Listen again. Mix. The short vowel sound is I. Bus. Now if a student gets a second word wrong. Listen again. Bus. The short vowel sound is a. Uh. Listen carefully. Choose the letter that makes the short vowel sound you hear. A. Uh, t. Hunt. So the program has recognized that the student struggled more than once and took them back to this reteaching level. Um, so it's taking the same skill, but it's doing it in um, a little bit more of a direct way where students can have more of a visual. Um, there's less background, um, the carrots are gone. Um, so the focus is really here on the dots and the letters. So um, I'm gonna hear that word one more time. Uh, so they're still expected to do the same thing. So now this bar down here you can see is blue. And that's kind of a visual um, alert to a teacher or a, um, a parent, whichever adult is kind of monitoring the student that oh, we're in reteaching, um, we need to, you know, take a, a close look at this skill. If the student gets this one wrong. Listen again. D -i -m dim. The short vowel sound is I. Listen for the vowel sound. I in this word, s, I, t. Yes, you hear the short vowel sound, I, in, sit. Now listen to this word, cat, k, a, t. The short vowel sound in the word, cat, is not, I. Choose this button. If the short vowel sound in the word matches the vowel you see, choose this button. If the short vowel sound in the word does not match the vowel you see, fit. It. So this has taken the skill down to the most explicit, direct instruction. So the student struggled independently then struggled with the reteaching, and now we're really into a direct instruction where um, the background is white. We're, we're really having a huge visual of that giant circle that gets bigger when we hear the sound in the middle of the word, and the student's expected to, um, to complete the, yeah, the bar is going to be yellow this time. So we're going to hear the word one more time. Fit. Fit. We hear the i, and there's the, the yellow bar. The short vowel sound in the word fit is i. Tag t a g. Okay, so the student in the in the reteaching has to complete fewer. You'll notice that one correct answer got a lot further than the green which gave them just a little bit. So they complete a few of these with the reteaching and then it's going to take us back to that independent level. So I'll show you that. The short vowel sound in the word tag is not I. Kid, k, I, d. The short vowel sound in the word kid is I. Doug. All right, so now we're back in the independent. We've had that reteaching done, and the, the program is, is giving us a chance to try um, again. You'll notice the green progress we had made is now dim. 
um, and it's going to have a start again. You see we lost our carrots. You can have a start again and you'll notice when I click um, the U that this is going to light up a little bit brighter. Um, so you can Hit. see that this is our current progress in relation to where we were before. So the student does have to start again if they go into direct instruction. Um, there's one more little icon down here, this little apple with the eye in it. If I, if the student was to struggle again and go back into the direct instruction, this apple would turn red. And that's kind of an alert to teachers to maybe take a closer look. You know, if you have a, a number of students working on the program and you're monitoring their, their usage, um, it's kind of just a quick alert to tell a teacher who's checking in, hey, take a closer look at what the student is doing with this, um, this skill. Teachers get a lot of information from this program. That's one of the things that the staff loves about our usage of this. Um, they get a lot of data and a lot of information about uh, what students are struggling with and what they can do to help support them in the skills that they are struggling with. Um, so we really encourage parents not to give a lot of help at home with Lexia because if someone is struggling with, say, medial vowels, we want to know that so that we can do um, some reteaching of the skill in the classroom. If a parent is sitting and in, in really helping and doing it for the student, that doesn't give us um, the, the feedback and information that we need. So I'm going to X out and go back to this screen. Um, I'm going to um, encourage anyone with any any questions about the program um, to get in touch with me. My email is kpoisson, P-O-I-S-S-O-N, at M-U-R-S-D.org. You can reach me there. And um, anything that you are wondering about, um, about Lexia and using it at home, please don't hesitate to send me an email. I hope this was helpful. Um, and, and just get in touch if there's anything that I didn't touch on that you're wondering about. Thanks so much.